for this overview for teachers of engaging families in the local community. I'm Graham Stewart, a community engagement lecturer at the Family Action Centre, which is part of the University of Newcastle. Across Australia, there's an increasing awareness of the importance of school community partnerships and the value of schools engaging families in the local community. There are a range of reasons we might want to engage families. There's extensive research showing that partnerships between schools, families and communities strongly and positively affect student achievements, including improved school readiness, higher retention and graduation rates, enhanced cognitive development and academic achievement, higher motivation and greater ability to self-regulate behaviour, and better social and relationship skills. There's also an increasing emphasis on community engagement in policy. The Melbourne Declaration, which was signed by federal and state education ministers in 2008, set the agenda for Australia's educational future. One of the areas emphasised was the importance of family and community engagement. Australian governments commit to working with all school sectors to ensure that schools engage young Australians, parents, carers, families, other education and training providers, business and the broader community to support students' progress through schooling and to provide them with rich learning, per learning personal development and citizenship opportunities. The national curriculum and the digital educational education revolution are two examples of radical changes to education in Australia that were facilitated by this agreement. Although family and community engagement was further down the priority list, it is increasingly being emphasised. The impact of these statements can be seen in the Australian National Professional Standards for Teachers. The introduction to the standards by the New South Wales Institute of Teachers suggests Teachers value opportunities to engage with their school communities within and beyond the classroom to enrich the educational context for students. They understand the links between school, home and community in the social and intellectual development of their students. The last of the seven standards is engage professionally with colleagues, parents, carers and the community. There is clearly an expectation that teachers need the skills to engage families and communities. It's also important to recognise that schools play an important role in building strong communities. They can provide a variety of resources that can be of use. For example, think about how many schools have new halls that can be used by the local community. Schools can provide leadership in the community. For example, Connected Communities is a New South Wales strategy that positions schools as community hubs that will deliver a range of services from birth through school to further training and employment, particularly in marginalised communities. The schools play a central leadership role in this strategy. Schools can help bring communities together and build social capital through a wide range of activities such as fates, Mother's and Father's Day breakfast, social events and so on. In 2008, the Department of Education, Employment and Workplace Relations published a framework of school community partnerships consisting of seven dimensions. The first was communicating. Schools go out of their way to make parents and families feel welcome and valued and ensure there is a two-way exchange between families and schools. Number two, connecting learning at home and school. Families and schools understand the overlap between the home and school environments and work together to create positive atti attitudes to learning in each child. Number three, building community and identity. Schools facilitate activities that improve the quality of life in a community while honouring the culture, traditions, values and relationships in that community. Number four, recognising the role of the family. Emphasises that as primary educators of their children, parents and families have a lasting influence on their ch children's attitudes and achievements at school. They can encourage their children's learning in and out of school and are also in a position to support school goals, directions and ethos. Parents look to schools to provide secure and caring environments for their children. Number five, consultative decision making. An inclusive approach to school decision making and parental involvement creates a sense of shared responsibility among parents, community members, teachers and school leaders. Number six, collaborating beyond the school. 
The wider community can provide services which strengthen and support schools, students and their families. And number seven, participating. Families, time, energy and expertise can support learning and school programs in many ways. And this framework provides a useful um, place to start when considering about family and school partnerships. One of the things that has a big impact on how schools work with families and communities is how we see them. Our approach at the Family Action Centre is built on a strengths-based approach in which we consciously attempt to build on family and community strengths. Asset-based community-driven development, or ABCD, can be relevant to schools. If we think of the metaphor of a half-full glass, ABCD fo focuses on the half-full part of the glass. The half-empty glass represents the notion that individuals, families and communities are deficient and have needs. The half-full glass represents the notion that individuals, families and communities have many stre strengths, capacities and assets. If we see the school community through the half-full glass, we are more likely to find ways to engage them. As Crowell suggests, if we ask people to look for deficits, they'll usually find them, and their view of situations will be coloured by this. If we ask people to look for successes, they'll usually find them, and their view of situations will be coloured by this. Many traditional approaches to working with communities start with a needs analysis or needs map or some other way of focusing on the community's needs and problems. This gives us the half-empty glass. In creating a needs map, we focus on the problems in the community and we can overlook many community strengths. When talking about individuals, we might focus on how they are unemployed, drug users, apathetic or unskilled. Families can be seen as being dysfunctional, abusive or violent. Communities can be labelled as being toxic, disconnected or unsafe, with high levels of unemployment and isolation. So it isn't surprising that with all these problems, the control of funds and services go to external organisations. As a school, it doesn't give us a lot of, of to, to work on and to build on in engaging the school community. ABCD is built on four foundations. It focuses on community assets and strengths rather than problems and needs. It identifies and mobilises individual and community assets, skills and passions. It's community driven what Kretzmann and McKnight call building communities from the inside out, and it's relationship driven. And all of these apply in a school context. We can ask questions in two ways. We can ask, what are the needs of our school community? What's wrong with our community? What problems can we fix? What's broken? Or we can ask, what are the strengths and assets of our community? When was our school community at its best? What do we value most about our community? What is the essence of our community that makes it unique and strong? When we look at our community, we can look at broad, six broad types of assets or strengths. We can recognise the skills and abilities of individuals within the community and actively look for people who are passionate about the community, who are good at making connections or have skills they would be willing to share. We can identify voluntary community organisations and networks and what they offer or could offer to the school. There are often, these are often called associations in literature from North America. When we look at what we can look at what institutions, e.g. non-government organisations, not-for-profits, government agencies and businesses, are already connected to the school and the community. We can pay particular attention to small local institutions. We can look at our physical environment, both natural and built, in a new way. We can look at the local community in a broad way so that we include the informal e economy, for example, people swapping goods and services and voluntary work, as well as the traditional economy, for example, production and consumption. And finally, we can appreciate the stories, culture and heritage of the community. When to look at individuals and community assets, it's important to remember that we're looking for opportunities to build relationships and to build connections. We aren't correct creating a directory. The value in asset mapping is bringing people together so that they discover each other's strengths and resources and to think about how they can build on what is already in the community. 
My experience suggests that the most important thing is our attitude. If we focus on individual and community strengths and are committed to engaging families and communities, then we will find ways to do it. There are many great examples of teachers and schools that do amazing things with their school community. I'd love to hear about great examples and what works for you.